Well, hello again, everybody. Matt Kloskowski here. And in this video, we are going to take a look at the nitty gritty of the new slider that you'll find inside of the latest version of Lightroom. When I say latest version, May, this is May 2019. Um, they've just added this texture slider. And I'm getting a lot of questions on how is it like sharpening? How is it like clarity? How does it compare to these different things? When do I use it? Why do I use it? all that stuff? So we're going to get techie here. Okay. This is technical stuff. Um, I would encourage you, it's okay to watch this stuff. Don't be one of those people that reads and watches videos more than you practice, okay? It, it's going to get techy, and you can try to understand it all you want, but really, the best thing that you can do is practice it. Open up photos, try the different settings, and see what you like better. There is no right answer to all this. We can give you guidelines on, on how it works, but at the end of the day, there isn't a right answer. You use what looks good, okay? Now, before we get started, I have two things to tell you. Number one, there is an article from the uh, Adobe Camera Raw team, which is also Camera Raw's inside of Lightroom, that talks about this texture control. And there's, it's got a lot of really good information, and in I'm guessing it's from somebody that was behind the actual creation of this. Uh, Max went, and he's got some amazing information, some great examples in here. So I would advise you read this. I'll make sure I put it into the uh, description. And then number two, as we get into this, folks, if you are not on the latest version of Lightroom and you are not on the subscription plan and all that stuff, please don't leave a comment saying how horrible it is. The rest of us are, it's, it's fine. I understand if you don't want to be on it, but there's no reason you should watch this video. Stop now. There are millions of other videos on YouTube you can go watch. The rest of us don't need to hear your rant in the comments, okay? So please just go somewhere else. Be happy. There's no reason to continue watching this and ruin your day, okay? Let's get into this. So texture, uh, let's compare texture and clarity first. Let's talk about this. Texture is a, is what they're, they're calling a mid frequency type of an adjustment. All right. So what does frequency mean? And I, I don't want to get into the weeds here because frequency can you, <laughs> trust me, I was reading articles on this stuff. This, this goes way techier than I ever care to get. But in a nutshell, let me uh, switch images here. In a nutshell, if I were to zoom in to this part of the photo, this would be considered a high frequency area of the photo. Lots of contrast and texture, lots of difference between these areas and between the trees and the sky behind it. That would be considered a high frequency area. If you were to look at the sky back here, okay, just this area right over here, this would be considered a low frequency area. If I were to switch photos back to the one, one we'll see more of here. Again, the sky in this photo, this is a low frequency area. This is kind of a middle frequency area. And as we get into some of the little nooks and crannies down here, this would be more of a high frequency area. So it's when we talk about frequency, that's generally what we're talking about. Okay. Now, what does clarity do? Clarity works on mid tones. Okay, so when we talk about mid-tones, we're talking about, we're not just talking about contrast, right? Clarity adds contrast to mid-tones. We have a contrast slider that would add contrast to the brights and the darks, which is essentially what contrast does. Boost the whites, boost the blacks. It's essentially boosting your whites and black slider. It's essentially going into your curve, boosting the whites, pulling down on the blacks. You know, they, they all... You, know, you ever wonder why somebody does one thing one way and another person does another thing another way? They all basically do the same thing, adding contrast. Contrast is contrast. It's, it's however you like it the best, and that's really the most important part. Again, you'll hear me say this over and over again. Don't be one of those people that reads and watches videos more than you practice. Try this stuff out. See which ones you like. But clarity is going to work on midtones. So when I were, if I were to look at a photo like this, and I were to go down here to my tone curve, I can click that little target adjustment tool and I can start to hover over areas. And if you look on the tone curve, you'll see a little dot bouncing around, right? That's letting me know where it falls in the tonal range. You could see it's in the, it's in the middle area. That's a mid-tone. So if I were to adjust clarity here, that would be the, the biggest area that, that this photo would affect would be those mid-tones okay, in, in there. This I don't really consider a high frequency area or a low frequency area. So texture would also start to come into play inside of that area as well, as well as on the trees and whatnot here. Okay, because the texture is a middle frequency. 
frequency and tone don't necessarily have to be the same thing. So they're not always doing the same thing. The interesting thing, see a lot of people talking about texture and calling it clarity on steroids. That couldn't be further from the truth. Clarity is actually a much stronger slider than texture is. Okay. You can get, you can go, you can take the photo to way different places with clarity where texture is only going to get you so far. Okay. Again, they each have their place, but it, it is not clarity on steroids in any way. So let's, let's take all this stuff and, and let's, let's take a photo here. What I did is I cranked up texture and I'm, I'm going to go to the extremes. Okay. It's the video would take way too long if I started to do 10, 20, 30%, whatever. So I'm just going to do extremes. And of course you should do these tests on your own where I crank texture up to hundred percent, pull it back, crank clarity up to hundred percent, pull it back. And I also cranked up my sharpening and my detail panel here. I also cranked that up and I pulled it back. And what I did is I opened that photo into Photoshop. I had also removed this, the spots in the sky before, but we don't really care about that right now because we're working on these uh, detailed areas. And I've got some layers here inside of Photoshop and they're all named. So let's zoom in and let's zoom in on some of the action, some of the, the, the stuff that we have over here. So this is our before photo. In fact, I'm going to zoom in a little bit further. This is our before photo. Let's turn on texture at 100%. Okay. Off. On. It has the appearance that it's sharpening, has the appearance that it's adding contrast. Sharpening really is adding contrast to edges. That's all it is. Um, but I, I don't care what it's called. If it's got the appearance of sharpening, then I don't care. I'll, I'll use it for sharpening. Again, I'd get, get, get over the names of things. So texture is definitely adding texture to these areas. What you're going to notice is that it adds a nice amount of contrast and everything to these areas. If I were to go start to look at some of this over here, again, you can see it definitely gives some definition to things. I, I wouldn't say it's taken it from, you know, this is a semi sharp photo and I deliberately picked something that wasn't tack sharp because that's the kind of photo we would use this stuff on. If it's tack sharp, you, you know, you don't even really need to do much other than a little bit of sharpening. But I deliberately picked this, so it's not making it tack sharp, but it is adding some depth to it, all right? Remember we talked about mid-frequency, okay? This is a low-frequency area up here. Notice it's not doing anything to the sky. You don't see any noise. I'll even let you pixel peep. You don't see any noise up here. You don't see anything. You don't see any noise getting introduced into this uh, low-frequency area over here. Now, let's compare this with sharpening. Look at that, all right? So now, sharpening, again, we have masking sliders that can pull it back from some of these, uh, some of these low frequency areas, these smoother areas, but look at the difference in sharpening. Now, all things being equal, when we get down to here, that's the texture, that's the sharpening. Sharpening actually makes it look sharper. All right, where texture, it's still kind of blurry. It's just a little bit more, got some more depth and contrast to it, where sharpening actually makes it look sharper. Now, all of you tech nerds out there, you're sitting there and you're the no, I call you guys the noise police because you're sitting there saying, well, look at the noise that was introduced in here. Okay, you're full of crap because if I were to share this online at this size, you don't see any of this noise. And then the problem with the tech nerds is that you're not printing. So if you were to print this photo, you would never, ever see all that noise. All that noise would smooth out. That's why we over sharpen our, our photos when we're going to print. All right. The photo should look over sharpened because it'll smooth out in the printing process, especially if you're going to print it on more of a textured paper or canvas. It's it's this stuff is gone. But that is again, to me, this would be perfectly acceptable sharpening. Okay. Yes, it did get noisy, but it will smooth out in the print. And I know that because I print a lot. Now I might go in here to the sky and I might do some masking and whatnot in the sharpening, but hopefully you can see the difference between texture and sharpening where sharpening is going after everything. Now we got clarity. Let's turn clarity on and let's see what clarity is doing. Clarity would not be a good adjustment for this photo. Okay. Cause clarity is going to boost those midtones and add contrast, but clarity also messes with the luminance and the saturation of the photo. So if you look over here, number one, look at how, how hot some of these hot spots got. Look at that difference, right? 
there's a lot of hot spots in there and it's desaturated. I lost a lot of saturation there. If you want to compare it to texture, again, that's texture. This is clarity. Texture, clarity. So they are very, very different in what they do. Okay. It's not saying clarity is useless anymore. There's lots of places where I would use clarity and I'll go over some examples, but I did want to show you on this one where I think texture definitely works better and different than clarity, but I do think that sharpening would be the way to go in this. And maybe you can experiment. Here's the thing. It could be a combination of all of them. It doesn't have to be one or the other. And that's why it's important you start to use this yourself. So let's still go take a look at a couple of photos here. This this is a very, very high frequency photo. Okay. I think texture is still going to help it. It's a, I would say mid to high frequency. There's not a lot of smooth areas in this other than maybe the waterfall, but texture in this photo will definitely give the appearance of sharpening. All right. That's zero. That's a hundred percent. So it definitely will give the appearance of sharpening. Um, in this photo, this photo to me, I might use a little bit of texture because I think texture would do a really nice job on these trees. Again, this is zero. That's about 50, 60%. I think it does a nice job on these trees, but I also think clarity would help on this photo. I think clarity gives me a lot of mid tone contrast and there's a lot of mid tones, middle tones in this photo. So I think clarity would give a lot of nice depth to this photo too. A photo like this, I think for me, a photo like this would be almost all clarity. I think clarity would be the number one choice in this because I love what it does to the rocks and the trees and all these middle tones areas. Um, I can, I can, yeah, clarity will desaturate it a little bit, but I can always boost the saturation back and maybe warm it if I needed to. But this would be a clarity photo. And same thing as this one, you know, texture, yeah, texture will help it too. But I think clarity does a nice job too. And you'll notice the clarity is really going to affect back here a little bit more. You may or may not want that. You know, if you want that, that depth of field and you want that background blur, then maybe you pull back on that clarity and you just use texture because it does definitely help the trees and the bark. Okay. I won't go over this too much because it's, it's hopefully fairly self-explanatory. Believe it or not, and if you read that article I, I showed you, Believe it or not, texture was originally called smoothing, okay? And it was really meant to be a skin smoothing slider because you'll also find texture in the brush, the radial filter, and the graduated filter. So you don't have to do it to the whole photo. You can do it selectively. But it was originally called smoothing, and it was created to be a skin smoothing technique or skin smoothing setting because to try to keep most people from having to go over to Photoshop to do your skin smoothing, okay? I had said this before, high-end retouchers, it's not for you. Go go do your frequency separation stuff in Photoshop. Go do whatever you're going to do. You're not going to use this. This is for people that really aren't getting paid to do retouching. You go shoot an event, it's expected you're going to do some minor retouching to the photos. Now you can do it all on the raw photo non-destructively. Uh, the nice thing is, again, you wouldn't you wouldn't crank the texture up in this case. You would go the opposite way. You'd take it to the left and it would smooth things out. But... You also wouldn't use the slider. You could go over here and take the brush, bring that texture slider down, and you could go in here and paint. It actually works really well. That, again, keep in mind, this is what it was created for. It was created for skin smoothing. It was originally called a smoothing slider. It was created for this purpose, and it does a nice, fast job. Again, for people that aren't getting paid, you know who you are. You're shooting an event. You don't get to charge for your retouching, but it's expected that you're going to do some level of retouching. This is where this type of a slider comes in really handy. And you can, you know, get really finessed in how you pull it back or add to it to add that softness to the skin. Okay. So uh, make sure you check out that article. There's a lot of good information in the article and I hope you enjoyed this guys. It's, it is a very techie thing. If you wanted to learn more of the nitty gritty about it, great. Um, as always, my, my main thing is, is get out there and practice, you know, stop. <laughs> it's great to read. It's great to watch some videos, but if you're reading and watching videos more than you're out there practicing this stuff and out there shooting, there's a problem. So get out there, use it on your photos and you'll start to develop, I think a style and a feeling for how you like it and what works best for your photos. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you again soon.